Summit Hydraulics Coyote, third function valve kit, installation video The third function valve kit is designed to work with the following Coyote models. The tractor shown in this video might not match your exact model. The following parts are included with your assembly. For any replacement parts, or hardware, please refer to contact at summit-hydraulics.com. For all included parts, and hardware, please refer to the instructional manual. The following tools are recommended for this installation. We recommend using a torque wrench when tightening, instead of an impact wrench. Please torque to the specifications shown in the instructions. Initial preparations. Before you begin the installation, please make sure to read the instructional manual thoroughly, as it contains important safety warnings and assembly tips. The following safety steps need to be followed prior to installation of this valve kit. First, park the tractor on a flat surface. Place gear shift lever in park. Turn off engine and remove the ignition key. Second, place chocks in front and behind tractor's left rear wheel. After the tractor is secured, locate the hardware and lubricate all threads and O-rings with hydraulic fluid. We recommend that all Summit Hydraulics products be installed by an experienced professional. Step 1. Initial Assembly Begin by locating the valve assembly. There is a cardboard plate on the bottom of the valve assembly, held in place by four plastic inserts. Remove the inserts, and discard the cardboard plate. After removing the cardboard plate, insert the four Allen screws through the top holes, as shown. Locate, and attach the manifold. Ensure the P on the valve is aligned with the pinhole on the manifold, and push the valves into place. Make sure the screws match the manifold holes, and fully tighten the screws using an Allen wrench. Torque the screws to 2 foot-pounds. Next, install two, part four adapters, into both A and B ports on the valve assembly. Tighten the adapters using an open-end wrench. On the opposite side, install two, part six adapters, into both P and T ports. Tighten the adapters using an open-end wrench. Take care not to over-tighten. Next, install two, part 12 couplers, onto both, part four adapters. Tighten the couplers using an open-end wrench. Turn the valve assembly with the P and T ports facing down, and attach the valve bracket, part 1, as shown. Secure the valve onto the bracket using two, part 2, socket head screws. Fully tighten the screws using an Allen wrench. Torque the screws to 12 foot-pounds. Step 1 is now complete. Step 2, Valve Installation. Locate the forward and reverse pedal on the right side of the Coyote tractor. Locate the adhesive sticker. Peel the adhesive sticker off the tractor to review the bracket mounting location. Next, install the valve mount assembly to the tractor matching the bracket hole to the hole on the tractor. Make sure the valve assembly is facing towards the front of the tractor. Secure the bracket using one, part three bolt. The bolt goes through the bottom, and the nut goes through the top. We recommend to hand tighten the bolt first in case further bracket adjustment is needed. If the bracket adjustment is now finalized, we recommend you torque the bolt to 12 foot-pounds, using a wrench. Step 2 is now complete. Step 3, Pressure and Line Installation. Lift the tractor to a safe height using the recommended factory lift points. Make sure to place safety jack stands at the factory recommended setting. Follow factory recommended procedure to remove the rear right wheel of the tractor. Next, locate the selective control valve, SCV, and identify the power beyond port on the selective control valve, SCV. This power beyond port is the, P, pressure port. A hydraulic line is connected to the power beyond port on the selective control valve, SCV. This hydraulic line can be traced to the return to tank port on the tractor. This return to tank port is the, T, tank port. Follow factory recommended procedures to remove this hydraulic line from the power beyond pressure port, P, to the return to tank port, T. Remove the hydraulic line as needed. Next, identify the pressure line. Install the pressure line to the 45 elbow, on the manifold. Route the hydraulic pressure line towards the selective control valve, SCV, 
and towards the power beyond pressure port. Install the hydraulic pressure line, part 7, onto the pressure port. Fully secure the line using an open-end wrench. After securing the hydraulic pressure line, identify the return to tank line. Install the return to tank line to the 45 elbow, on the manifold. Route the hydraulic return to tank line towards the tank port, and install the hydraulic tank line onto the tank port. After attaching the adapter, part 17, onto the end of the hydraulic return tank line, Install the hydraulic return to tank line, part 16, onto the pressure port. Fully secure the line using an open-end wrench. Using the provided zip tie, secure the pressure and tank lines to minimize movement during tractor operation. We recommend securing all hydraulic oil lines to the factory hydraulic hard line. Follow factory procedure to reinstall the tractor wheel. Step 3 is now complete. Step 4, attaching the crossbeam coupler mount. Begin by locating the loader crossbeam bracket, part 8. Next, install two, part 9 adapters, 3 8 inch bulkheads, to the loader crossbeam bracket. Install the adapters as shown, with the nuts facing the flat side of the crossbeam bracket. Tighten the adapters using an open-end wrench. Next, attach one male, part 12 coupler, and one female, part 13 coupler onto the adapters. Tighten the couplers using an open-end wrench, and take care not to over-tighten. Proceed by locating the right side of the loader arm crossbeam. Remove the hydraulic hardline mounting plate, and hardware. Next, attach the loader crossbeam bracket assembly, as shown. Secure the bracket using the previously removed hardware, and fully tighten using an open-end wrench. The A and B work lines will need to be routed as shown, and secure to both the bulkhead adapters and male adapters on the manifold. Locate the A and B work lines, part 7. The ends with the 90 degree elbows go to the front of the tractor, while the open ends go towards the back of the tractor. Next, install two, part 5 male threaded couplers, onto the A and B work lines, as shown. Fully tighten the threaded couplers using an open end wrench. After securing the couplers, install two, part 13, female ISO 7241A couplers, onto both threaded couplers. Fully tighten using an open-end wrench. After preparing the work lines, route both A and B work lines along the loader arm, and towards the third function valve. Connect the two female couplers on the A and B work lines to the male couplers on the third function valve, and connect the work lines to the bulkhead adapters on the loader crossbeam bracket. Fully tighten using an open-end wrench, and take care not to over-tighten. Secure hydraulic hoses to the factory hardline alongside the loader arm with zip ties as needed. Extend the loader at different angle to ensure zero binding is occurring with the A and B work lines hydraulic hoses. Make sure the work lines are tightly secured. Step 4 is now complete. Step 5, Joystick Switch Installation. Begin by removing the existing knob from end of the control lever. Rotate, and remove the knob. Next, attach the joystick handle switch. Using an Allen wrench, loosen the four tightening bolts on the side of the joystick handle switch. The joystick bottom has an adjustable bushing, and can be adjusted as needed to obtain a rough fit. Slide the bushing over the control lever, and tighten the bolts on the side of the joystick handle switch. Orient the handle as needed that works best for you, and then fully tighten. Run the wire alongside the control lever, and feed the wire through the boot. Slide the boot off, and feed all wiring through the boot. Slide the wiring down through the loader valve cover. Take care not to pinch or cut the cables. Properly route the wiring, and use zip ties to secure the routing in place. Next, connect the plastic Deutsch connectors, part 11, to the valve body. There are ports on the valve body. Secure, and clip the connectors in place. After all wiring is in place, you will need access to the battery. Remove the front cover as needed, and pull out the battery. Connect the harness Deutsch connector to the switch Deutsch connector. The connectors should easily fit, and clip into place. Finally, connect the power and ground cables to the battery. Connect the black ground terminal end to the battery's negative post, and connect the red positive terminal end to the battery's positive post. Tighten as needed. Congratulations! Installation of the Coyote, third function valve kit, is now complete. You may now proceed, and do an operation check. Upon completion of installation, Ensure all connections are tight and secure. Connect the hydraulic implement hoses to the quick couplers, on the crossbeam coupler mount. 
Operate the hydraulics using two-button joystick. After hoses and cylinders are full of hydraulic fluid, check the hydraulic fluid levels of your machine. If low, add hydraulic fluid. Do not use your new valve kit until it has been fully assembled and inspected for correct performance in accordance with the instructional manual. Enjoy your new Coyote third function valve kit. Brought to you by Summit Hydraulics.